if you're running out of USB ports on your computer or you just want to add some more USB 3 ports, maybe you don't have any USB 3 ports, a great way to do that is to add an expansion card. And in this video, we have the Malia PCIe to type C. There's one type C port on this plus four USB 3 ports. This is what you get in the box here. Just open the box. All right, this is what you get. Obviously the card, a driver CD, which you probably don't need to use. You can use it if you want. Windows will use a driver. Uh, we'll get to that later on. And it actually includes a couple of power cables. So here's your set of power right into your power supply. And that gives you two uh, ports there, which is great. So one of those will actually go into the card because it needs power. If you don't have any set of uh, power free, you have the Molex connector here as well. So that's what you get. Let's go ahead and take the card out here. So here's a closer look at the Malia card. Now this process is going to be similar for any, any uh, USB 3 card that you add. All right, we're just using the uh, Malia here. So we got four USB 3 ports and a USB-C port. Great to have that. And also we have the 20 pin or the 19 pin uh, internal USB 3 port as well. So if you don't have any USB 3 uh, ports on your motherboard because you know, maybe you have some sort of USB um, three expansion that you're using, maybe like a card reader or something, and you need a free USB port internal, you know, 19 pin. Well, this is a good way to add one of those ports that you need. Right here is your power port. Technically, you don't have to use that. Uh, it just sort of depends on what load you're putting on it. It will actually work, but I would suggest as long as you have a free port that you go ahead and put power to it, and you'll use your SATA power to connect uh, right into there, which we'll get into. So let's go ahead and install this card. And here we are inside the computer, we've already removed the cover and the two shrouds for HP Z820 in this case. And you'll notice that none of these lanes here, there's a lane, there's a lane, lanes over here. None of these lanes are actually the same size as this. Well, that's fine. All of these lanes will be compatible, well, except for that last one there. But all of these lanes would actually work just fine. Now, if your computer has a lane that's about this size, that's probably the one that I would use. But the lane I'm going to use is a PCIe 3 X8, it's actually a four, but it's got an eight lane. And we'll just plug this in. It only goes in one way, so don't worry about messing anything up. So after you've selected your lane, if there is a blank cover, be sure to remove that. How you remove it will depend, you know, gonna depend on your computer. So let me go ahead and remove this blank here. All right, so we got the blank out. We grab our card. As you can see, how that matches up. Even though this lane is longer, this only goes in one way. It's very easy actually. So we'll just put that slot in there first, match it up inside and just push it down. Don't push too hard. It should go in pretty, you know, pretty easily because again, this only goes in one way. You shouldn't have to be pushing too hard. And that's really all there is to it. It's already installed. Very good. So now you can put a screw in there or in my case, I just flip this cover down and there we go. It's installed. Kind of a tight fit for the C up here. Uh, this, just, of course, depends on your computer and how they do these separator bars. You know, if you need to, you could always take a little Dremel and just cut a little bit of that out. But just wanted to show you the back, just to show you how it fits. The USB ports are fine. Again, this is an HP Z820. Uh, these bars are going to depend on what kind of, you know, what kind of computer you have and what port you put it in. But it looks pretty, pretty good. And here's the other side of the card. So right there is your internal uh, 19 pin, 20 pin, whatever you want to call it, internal USB port that you can plug something into. If you have some peripheral in here that needs to have that USB 3. And then down here is your power port. Technically, you don't have to plug that in. It sort of depends on the, on the load you're putting on the car. This will draw power from that port there, but I'd suggest you plug it in if you can. So what we need to do, since that's what's normally called a SATA power port, we could use something like this, which is coming from our power supply. That's our set of power. Now this won't reach, so we could use the extender here. That's included, but what I'm going to use is a Molex right here. And we'll just use the included adapter to actually make that reach. So first things first, locate a free uh, Molex power adapter here. I'm gonna choose this one because it's the closest it reaches the uh, farthest. Now I could use the included cable here, but that's gonna give me two SATA power at the end, which I don't need because it would just be flopping around. Not a big deal. You know, you don't have to use both, but I just don't need both. And I can use this for something else, perhaps in the future. So I already have another cable, which I purchased separately. All you do with these is you just connect them together and they only go together one way. 
Hopefully you can see that there, they're, the way that they're shaped, okay? If it doesn't go one way, turn it around, it'll go right in. Now you might have to push kind of hard to get these to really connect, but just push and there it goes. You want a nice secure fit. All right, and then we plug in our power port here into the card right down below there. Much like other things on a computer, they really only go in there one way. So let me dig in here and get this plugged in. All right, there we go. Plugged in and ready to go. Again, it only goes in there one way, so if it doesn't slide in, turn it around. Now make sure your cables aren't, you know, hitting anything important. You can go ahead and close up your machine and turn it on. And here we are in Windows, and I already have a USB 3 drive plugged into our card. Comes up just fine. If I grab this 1.4 gig file or so, throw it over here. We're getting a little over 100 megabits uh, megabytes per second. I'll just stop that. Now, right now, what we're using is the uh, driver that Microsoft will install automatically here on Windows 10. So that's the driver you're seeing right here. If you want, we uh, we could install the drivers from the CD if you want. And that's how you do this. Just obviously pop it in and run through this setup here. Okay, and there we go. It, it detected that drive after we got the new drivers on there. And we come back here, open this drive up again. Now it's running on the new drivers. If you want to see that, we can go to the control panel and device manager here. I'm down to USB, and now you can see the new uh, drivers that were installed, these here. Okay, and if you don't like these drivers, you can just right click and hit uninstall and that will automatically reinstall the microsoft uh, driver you might have to come up here to actions and scan for hardware changes and that will automatically reinstall that microsoft driver and that microsoft driver for the most part just you know works works just fine but just so you can see we're going to get about the same speed so right about the same thing obviously that depends on the kind of drive that you have uh and, and you know the speed of that actual drive all right so i'm actually going to come back here device manager and I'm just going to use the Microsoft drivers for now. You can use either either of these as driver packages. It really doesn't matter. Just use whatever seems to work best for you. I'm going to test out uh, the Microsoft drivers for a while. So we've uninstalled that one entry. Now you may need to uninstall this entry as well. Just uninstall that. Your list will refresh. Then you can come up here to actions and scan for hardware changes. And this will automatically install the Microsoft driver. And there we go. As you saw, it detected that drive and we have this driver installed now. So you can do either one. They both work pretty much the same, but you might want to go back and forth. If something isn't working correctly for you for the automatically installed driver, you might want to install the drivers from the disk. But that is how you add a USB 3 card to your computer.